morning. It is awesome, absolutely awesome to be here. Uh, I just got back, at, back here late last night from Indonesia, where I got to spend some great time with Luke Rausch and Andre Mann, two members of Summit Church, uh, and two guys who are my partners. Partners in a firm called Sovereign's Capital, a fund, uh, an investment fund that seeks to invest in Christian-led companies in emerging markets. And it is absolutely awesome to see what God is doing in Indonesia. Uh, we had a group on Wednesday night. Uh, some of you may know we've got a, a men's fellowship group focused on the marketplace called Inklings that meets here in Durham. Well, they set up a chapter in Indonesia, and we had a meeting on Wednesday, and 40 marketplace leaders came out. And uh, Wim Tanglisan, who's a special advisor to the president, shared his story about how God is working through his life in the marketplace. And it's just really neat to see a revival among Christian-led businesses in a majority Muslim nation, really focusing in on what does it look to honor God in the workplace. Uh, really neat stuff. It's much warmer in Indonesia, by the way. Uh, but it's absolutely great to be back. Um, I want to share with you this morning a bit about the way that God has worked through Bandwidth.com, which is a telecommunications company uh, based here in Raleigh. Uh, we make voice better, or at least we like to think we do. We power people like uh, Google Voice and Pinger and Skype and a lot of the new age telephony companies. We own a company called Republic Wireless and Phone Booth and have had a... Is, anybody, is that some hooping I heard? All right. All right. If you got a Republic Wireless phone, hold it up. Not too many. Some? All right. Good. I got one, too. I'm going to read off of it. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about that. And, and so that's what we do. But what we do at Bandwidth in terms of making voice better uh, is not nearly as important as how we do it. Uh, and then as I get to, of course, why we do it. Uh, I've got a talk that I give that's uh, uh, called The 20 Lessons That God Has Taught Us at Bandwidth. Uh, I'm only going to share four or five this morning, but uh, if any of this resonates with you at all, uh, email me. Uh, my email is hkasner at sovereignscapital.com, and I can send it to you. Uh, and it's a work in progress, because God continues to do great things at Bandwidth, and it's awesome, just awesome to, to be with Him in the workplace. Uh, so I'm going to share with you the first four things about Bandwidth uh, that are really important to us, that are values. Uh, and they really underpin everything about who we are. Um, when we started the company, uh, I got together with David at 411 Restaurant in Chapel Hill in 2000. And we said, what are we going to found this company? What's it going to be about? And uh, we both decided that it was going to be about faith first. It needed to be, have values that were going to really mirror who we were. And so our four values, four things that really underpin what we do, is faith number one, then family, then work, and then fitness. And I'm going to take those in reverse order. And with all the 20 lessons we've got, um, each one of them is, is grounded in Scripture. So I'm going to start and go in reverse. Four, three, two, one. Number four, fitness. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Work, play, uh, work hard, play hard. Men, son, incorporate, son. There are lots of ways to look at that. Um, but for us, David and I, we're just... Uh, really intent on having a culture that mirrored who we were. David, as many of you may know, is a world-class endurance athlete. I'm not kidding. He really is that good. Uh, I'm a neighborhood-class endurance athlete, and uh, I live in a very small neighborhood. But working out for us is a big part about who we are and how we really stress and how we really get a feeling of inspiration uh, to help us to be as good as we possibly can in the workplace. So our fourth value is fitness. Uh, today, we've got about 400 employees, and uh, more than half of them work out every day at lunch. We give those folks uh, that work out an hour and a half off at lunch every day to work out. We think it's an important part of our success. Uh, number three, work. It's our third value. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God, 1 Corinthians 10.31. Uh, very important for us. We believe that God is glorified when we do excellent work. Incredibly important. There is no better teacher on this subject than J.D. He did a sermon series uh, a couple of Junes ago that was a great inspiration for me, great inspiration for Luke and Andre, and that's what they seek to invest in in Indonesia. It's not enough just to be somebody who says, well, I want to I, I uh, talk about my faith in the workplace. Doing excellent work provides us with the best opportunity 
to be a witness. Francis Schaeffer said it uh, really best uh, back in the 60s. And to paraphrase him a bit, he said, effectively, to the degree that we do work well is the degree that we have an opportunity to witness and be heard. Incredibly important. When you do excellent work, people want to understand what makes you tick and why you do what you do. If you do mediocre work, they're not so interested. Really important that we work hard. And we want to compete and win at bandwidth. It's important. When we work hard, we feel God's pleasure. We feel it's exactly what God designed David and I and our senior management team and everybody at bandwidth.com to do. Work is a form of ministry. We think it's as important a form of ministry as any other type of vocational ministry. Number, uh, number two. I'm working my way back down. Four, three, two, one. Number two, family. Family for us at Bandwidth is more important than work. Husbands, loved your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And then fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. So I came down uh, to North Carolina from New York, which may not have invented the 70-hour work week, but they perfected it. And when David and I got together, we said, we want to make sure that we're home for our families. Between the two of us, we have nine kids. And we decided from the first day that we wanted to be with them as they grew up. And so that means for us, we leave the, the uh, work every day uh, at 6 o'clock. We want to be at home for 6.30, 8.30. Those two very important hours to be a dad for us or a mom for many of our employees. And that's dinner time and bedtime. We want to be there with them. Incredibly important. Uh, one night, uh, oh, then the other thing, of course, coming back to the, the work value, again, we want to compete and win. So we dial back in at 8.30, get back on the Internet, and we hammer. And if you've got to hammer till 1 o'clock to get the work done, then we hammer till, we, uh, till 1 o'clock to get the work done. But that does not happen at the expense of family. One night that that doesn't happen, dialing back in on the Internet, one night that we don't work is date night. For the Casterns, it's Wednesday night, which means after we put the kids to bed, we go out, and we have a great date night. It's incredibly important for us. It's where Kimberly and I get nurtured. It's where I get an opportunity to share with her what's going on at work, the good things and the bad things, and she does the same with me. Family is more important for work, more important than work for us. Number one, faith. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. It's incredibly important for us. It's where we get all of our power. We feel God and the Holy Spirit at work at Bandwidth and at Sovereign's Capital every day. We look for opportunities to share the reason for the hope we have, and it is indeed an incredible hope. Work is meaningless for us without our faith. Incredibly important. Um, there have been many great ways that God has worked through the life of bandwidth.com. I want to share one thing that I think that we did right, and I want to share a couple of things that I think we did wrong. One thing I think we did right. Early on at Bandwidth, we decided it was incredibly important for us to make sure that faith was first, of course. And in, the, in, a, in an industry like bandwidth, where you deal with a lot of data internet connectivity, you have the opportunity to get uh, propositioned by lots of folks who want to get internet access. All sorts of awful folks, spammers, people in the adult entertainment business. So of course we decided in a company where faith is the primary value, we're not going to work with anybody in the porn industry. So about two years in, and just to give you a little bit of a, a background of this, uh, our first year in business, we had $76,000 in revenue and 20 employees. If you're doing the math, it's not a very good ratio. Second year, we had 30 employees and 274 grand in revenue. Still not very good. Uh, right at the end of that year, we had a deal that came in through our website for an OC3. And if those of you are, uh, know anything about internet access, it's a very large circuit. It's a very big deal for us. It was going to be a, a deal that was really going to make our quarter. It had been a deal that one of our sales reps had been working on for a long time. So the uh, deal came in, uh, and I remember celebrating it. Uh, for my business partner, David Morgan, high-fiving is a full-contact sport, and I can still feel how that felt when we closed this deal. And so, closed the deal, uh, went to install, and as you might imagine, it was indeed for the adult entertainment business. The deal had come in under the name of a holding company. 
uh, when we went to provision the circuit, we found out that it was going to be used for nefarious purposes. So our ethical dilemma, and we had one, wasn't whether we installed the circuit or not. We knew we couldn't. We had dedicated the business to the glory of God, and we couldn't possibly violate that. But the ethical dilemma for us was, do we compensate the sales rep? That was really hard for us. We went back and we looked at the training that we had given this person, and he had done everything right. He had worked on this deal for more than a month. It's a deal he was really counting on. He had done exactly what we had trained him to do. So at the time where we had the lowest cash balance in the company's history, we paid the biggest commission check we had ever paid. And I really think that God used that. From that quarter on, Bandwidth.com was the fourth fastest growing privately held company in the country. It was amazing. We had a great growth. We effectively went from zero million to 100 million. And Lord willing, this year we'll do 200 million. And I really think that God used that as a chance to glorify Himself. And we haven't always done things great, but that was one, point, one thing that I think that we did well. It's really important. A uh, couple of things we haven't done well at Bandwidth. Uh, number one, I wish from the outset of the company that we had had a corporate chaplain. We didn't bring on board corporate chaplains until about year eight, and they have been a godsend. Absolutely incredible. A big part of our ability to love our employees. Uh, they have been able to share their faith. They have been able to bring people to faith. They have, uh, God has used them to save marriages, uh, and it's just an incredible ministry. We use an organization called Corporate Chaplains of America, and I couldn't recommend them more highly. Um, they have done incredible work, including uh, in December, we had a, a young 39-year-old father of two die of a heart attack, and he was there to minister to the family uh, and to our employees. An incredibly important time. It ended up being uh, the person who gave the, uh, who gave the homily at the, uh, the funeral mass was our corporate chaplain. And through that experience, people came to faith. Twelve people raised their hands uh, uh, and accepted Jesus through that time. And Nathan's loss uh, still impacts us to this day. I'm so glad that we had a corporate chaplain who was there to minister all, to all of our needs. We should have had that day one. Uh, number two thing that I wish we'd done differently at Bandwidth. I wish that I had been emboldened to pray with our employees more, especially the employees that don't share our faith. Early on, I was a little uncomfortable. I knew that people knew why we did what we did. Everybody knew that Dave and I were Jesus freaks. People got that. But I didn't want to go overboard. I didn't want to have too many Bible studies in the office. And I just wanted, to, I just wanted people to feel that they could have their space. And so what I ended up doing was uh, I would pray with believers. But if somebody didn't share our faith, I didn't really seek out opportunities to do that. And that was a huge mistake and an incredible opportunity lost. I didn't do that until year five or six or seven in the company. Uh, so that meant that, uh, and, and you know, you probably see this in your own company with coworkers. You know, somebody says, I'm, I'm going to be late for work. I've got to take my dad to uh, chemo on Tuesday. Or I've got to leave work early on Thursday because Johnny has got his, gotten in trouble again. I've got to go for another parent-teacher conference. Do you mind if I pray with you? And employees take that for exactly what it is. It's an act of love. It's me loving on them in the way that I best know how. And I don't pretend that they pray the sinner's prayer as they walk out the door. But I do believe that God uses that in a way to show them himself. It's incredibly important for us. So I want to challenge you and encourage you to look for opportunities to share your faith with people through relationship, through love. Always be ready for, to share the reason for the hope we have with gentleness and respect that happens through love and relationship. And I'd missed opportunities to do that early on. I wish I'd done that a little bit differently. You see, that all bridges from something I think is really important. Um, there is a TED.com talk on leadership by a guy named Simon Sinek. And to the best I can tell, Simon's not a believer. But what Simon does is Simon talks about the incredible importance about talking about why we do what we do. And he talks about it through the lens of Apple Computer, and he talks about it at the Wright Brothers. And talking about the fact that people resonate with the why of leadership much more than the what or the how. At Bandwidth, we make telecommunications better. We make voice better. But I don't think that that's what really motivates people to come to work each day, day in, day out, and work as hard as they do and as well as they do. Not all of our employees share our faith, but I think they've always been looking for something to, un to understand more about what makes David and I tick. 
And so it's been great to be able to share the reason why we do what we do. Uh, I was uh, coming back on the plane yesterday after, after 38 hours in transit. The last thing I listened to was a Tim Keller podcast, and this is, the, this is what I heard, the words that I heard from Tim Keller right before I had to shut down as we approached Raleigh Durham. Tim says, the essence of being a Christian is not living a good life, but why you live a good life. Ours is a unique religion. It's the only one where doing good things doesn't earn you anything. For people to understand why we do in the workplace, why we do what we do, is so incredibly important to our ability to honor God. People look for that. At Bandwidth, uh, we found a couple of things. One thing is, is that the secret to business, and if you're getting your MBA right now, this is all you ever need to know about business. It's right here, okay? Is all the success of business comes down to acquiring customers and doing it really well and retaining customers and doing that really well. That's all business is. If you do both of them very well, you'll be very successful and you'll, uh, you'll have all, all sorts of great opportunities to honor God. So uh, acquire customers and retain customers. But even more important than that is retaining your employees. See, if you've trained somebody up on being good at acquiring customers, you don't want to lose them. Same thing on retaining customers. If you have trained somebody up on retaining your key customers, you don't want to lose them. Someday, Harvard Business School may or may not do a case study on the rise of Bandwidth.com and the success of Bandwidth.com. If they do, they're not likely to give credit, as we would, to divine providence. They are likely, however, to look at the fact that we've had virtually no turnover, no willing turnover, in our senior management ranks since the beginning of the company. It's incredibly important for us, and we think it's because we talk about why we do what we do. And the folks at Bandwidth want to be about something greater than the manufacture and distribution of widgets. Why what we do uh, and sharing that with our employees is very key. Um, my hope today is from this little talk, and we'll talk more about this, I think, on the panel, but my hope is that you would be inspired and encouraged to look for opportunities to pray with your coworkers, to do it with gentleness and respect, through real relationship, that you'll be empowered and encouraged to do excellent business for the sake of doing excellent business to please and glorify your God, your Father in heaven. Really important. We are not to work until six o'clock because our real ministry is doing young life, although that's an incredibly important ministry. And we're not to work till six o'clock because our real work is to go ahead and volunteer with refugees, though that also is incredibly important and we need to be doing it. Our work is our ministry. Our ministry is our work, and doing that until 6 o'clock every day or longer when you dial back in after you've spent time with your family is very important. Seek that. Um, thank you for coming out this morning. You being here on a cold Saturday morning is an incredible encouragement, and uh, I hope that you get a lot from the conference. Really appreciate your time. <laughs>